So finally I got my hands on the smallest and burning handheld, the RG Nano. Let's check it out. Now opening up the box, wow, that is definitely a premium looking device and it came with a keychain attachment, a user manual, a USB cable, a 3.5 millimeter adapter for headphones and that's it. I thought it came with a magnifying glass, well I guess not. Anyway, moving on. Let's start by asking the first question, is this handle made for ants? To answer that, I'll have to show you some size comparisons. Here is the Miu Mini V2. There was a time I used to think the Mini Mini V2 was too small. Now comparing with this, it feels much bigger. Now comparing with RG35XX and finally with the Nintendo Switch. Wow, it sure is tiny. The only thing which I have close to this size would be my Paukiri Q36. One thing common about these two handhelds is the fact that both of these run funky OS. Now talking about the performance, it has a single ARM Cortex A7 core CPU and has a 64MB DDR2 RAM which means that it can run all the way up to PlayStation 1. If someone had told me in the year 1997 that one day I'll be able to play PlayStation 1 games on a tiny keychain device like this, I would have never believed them. I would say this is definitely a great time to be alive to see how much things have evolved and who knows, maybe after some years we'll have our PlayStation 5 games on a keychain handle like this. So even though it's being marketed as a keychain, if you ask me, I would never use it as a keychain because I'm sure I'll end up accidentally smashing the screen somewhere in just a few days. Plus this one didn't come with any screen protector. What I actually suggest as a keychain would be a tiny device called Thumbby which is made by tiny circuits and you can even play games on it. But if Anbranic really wanted me to use this as a keychain, then they should provide a clean plastic case so that I don't have to worry about it getting damaged. But for now, the only place I would keep it would be inside my pouch in my cycle. In fact, I like to game on this whenever I take a short break while cycling. The only other place I think would be inside my car to use while I'm getting bored sitting waiting for someone. One thing to note is that this does not have a sleep mode. But if you're playing something and you power it off during a gameplay, it will auto save before turning it off and auto load the game and the save state while turning it on. Now that is a pretty neat feature. Alright, so now let's have a closer look at the device. On the right side we have a power button, a single micro SD card slot, there is nothing on the left side. On the bottom we have a connector to use it as a keychain and a single mono speaker. On the top we have single shoulder buttons and a USB port. On the front we have these tiny glossy face buttons and even more tiny select and start buttons and a decent feeling d-pad. Overall I would say it's just big enough to play some games but would I play on this for long hours? I guess not. But at the same time 100 Pokemon is definitely doable. Especially if you're a new parent it would be really useful. Then again to read the text I would still have to use my glasses because it's that tiny. I'm testing this audio jack as well. Yeah it's not bad. In fact this thing actually reminds me of the old mp3 player and this can be used for that purpose as well. But these days I actually prefer using my wireless headphones so I don't think I'll ever use this feature. Plus it has a video player feature too. Again, I'm never gonna use it. Now playing games on this, well I've tested all the systems it has. The only time it stuttered a bit was when I tried playing some high-end PS1 games. Like for example Tekken. But at the same time, you can still manage to run a ton of PlayStation 1 games. I really enjoy playing some old school systems on this. Here are a few.
And even the speaker quality is not bad either when you consider how tiny this is. And here is a tip, if you guys think that these games are stretched out and you guys want to change the aspect ratio, you can easily change by pressing the select button and press down on the d-pad or you can go into the menu and change from there. Another cool thing is that you can directly connect this to your PC with the help of this USB cable rather than removing your SD card to do the data transfer. So that's a cool feature too. Now finally as a conclusion, I think the Anpernic Nano is a pretty cool looking device. But you guys need to understand one thing, this handheld is not competing with bigger handhelds like Miu Mini Plus. This is definitely meant to be an oldie item. I think it's actually meant to be kept somewhere to show off how cool it is rather than playing on it. It can be a great conversation starter too. Honestly, I would have spent more time playing on this if Anbernic made it a metal version in the same size of the Miu Mini V2 than making it this tiny. But at the end of the day, as a collector, I would definitely get one and I would like to give this a 3.5 out of 5 and this device actually goes for $65 plus shipping but you can use the code in my description to get some discount and with that I would like to wrap up today's video. I hope you all found this video helpful. Please make sure to leave a like, do comment what you think about this device and please consider subscribing to stay tuned. Until next time, ciao.